All right, and welcome back to Logan Simmons Photography. Great to have you here, and today I want to talk about a pretty popular photo editing program, and it's available for free. It's one of the most popular editors on the Mac App Store, and that is Polar. Uh, and now this is, of course, available on other platforms. I want to see if it's really worth it on the Mac today. If you got a Mac, is Polar worth it if you don't want to spend too much in the way of money? But before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you know when a new video is out. And after you watch the video, if you do like it, hit that like button, comment down below, let us know what you think about Polar or the video in general. But let's go ahead and get into it. I do want to go ahead and show you my screen here. I've got a couple photos, so I guess about four of them down there, loaded into Polar. And of course, basically it's a very simple, simple program. In fact, one thing you notice right off the bat is this probably was not originally designed for the Mac OS. It's definitely more of a mobile app that's kind of been adapted into Mac OS. And the reason I say that is if you look up here, uh, there's not, you know, here's just open, save. They did do some things there. But if you go under edit, there's stuff about spelling and grammar and speech dictation window. Uh, you can tell this is not native. It probably was designed initially for iOS and then ported over to Mac OS. So you do have some limitations there. There's, they're not taking advantage of all the Mac OS features. But basically, what, what do you get? I mentioned this is a free version. There is a paid version here as well. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look. I can load up here settings and account. If you do sign up for an account, uh, maybe they send you updates about what's going on. But they also give you access to the paid version. And let's go ahead and do a quick comparison here. So uh, let's see here. It allows, I guess, you to share information between the platforms if you have the Pro. As far as basic adjustments, it's about the same. Uh, you can't do denoise on the free version, which is interesting. And then masks. Now, basically, this is all of your local editing. None of that is available in the free version. You do have to get the pro version, and it is a monthly subscription. So we'll go ahead and scroll down here. You can do some filters, but not too many. Uh, and you got some auto enhancements, um, you know. So there's still a decent amount, but if specifically local edits, you're not going to be able to do that in the free version. Let's go ahead and get out of this and go back into our picture. Now, I want to go ahead and start with this one over here. We'll kind of start on the left over here on this side, and then we'll work our way over to the right so you can see how that works. Now, these right here are our filters. So I can go in here. Now, I don't have access to many of them because, again, this is the free version, but some very basic filters, and I can go in here and you know select that if I were to happen to like that. And not really my cup of tea so much there, but, of course, again, if you have the pro version, there's more. I'll direct you over here to the right side. This is our editing history. So if I want to go back to the original, I can do that there. Nice to have that in a free product. I don't have to do undo, undo, undo 50 times uh, if I want to do that. So we can do text. Uh, we want to you know, do some face recognition. Of course, we can crop right there, rotate. You know, fairly easy. Uh, excuse me, there we go. So here's our rotation if we needed to. Fairly easy live. I do like how that's done right there. Go ahead and hit that uh, reset there. Let's go back to original. And now these are layers, uh, which uh, again, it's going to probably say that this is not uh, something that you can, can do here. But for example, if I wanted to say, uh, I don't know, weather, I could add some rain in here. And it says, you know, I could, for example, I could, it might allow me to export this image just once today. I'd have to get the paid version if I wanted to do that. So not too much interest for me, at least here on the left. Let's go over here to the right. Now, one thing you notice, I want to point this out too, how large the interface actually is. It really does get out of your way. I think that actually draws, it's a reason for that, is it goes back to the mobile version. This is, again, more of a mobile-oriented product that has been basically transformed a little bit to work on the Mac. There's even a Windows version as well. So let's go ahead and do some quick things. Let's go over to Adjustments, probably the most important tab. This is a little pixie dust thing up here. I can go ahead and hit that and do an auto-enhance. Uh, not sure why that would be better than what we had before, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Don't want to do that. Let's just do some basic things. Maybe I want to bring the exposure up. I can go ahead and bring a histogram up over here, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. So now we can see where that's going. Uh, it is. It, it does seem to kind of get in the way. I wish you could dock it someplace, but you know it is going to be where it is. So I guess the upper uh, left-hand corner is is good enough for now. Um, you know, you have your basic contrast here. 
Uh, let's see, detail, you do actually have clarity for free, which is nice. Uh, now, denoise will not work again. That's the, gonna be in the paid version only. Uh, but let's just keep going down here, see what we can do. Let's do color, maybe a little bit more vibrance going on there. Uh, I do have hue, saturation, and luminance here, which is pretty nice to have. So I can go in here and say, you know those greens? Uh, maybe I wanna make them a little bit more green or so. You can see it's starting to have some effect. And I'll go ahead and saturate there. Um, I don't wanna overdo it though. You can see it's kinda of picking up a little bit of the, uh, uh, the, the sand there as well. Let's see if I can go ahead and do a little bit of tint and maybe knock that out a little bit there. There we go, and eh, maybe. Let's go back to our green and see if we can continue to saturate here. Eh, more or less, I'm gonna try and see maybe if I can make that a little bit warmer. So again, very, very easy to use this, not too many problems. Of course, I have curves, and I can collapse these down, which is nice, very easy. Makes it nice and easy to use. You know, vignette, I could do that from the free version, I believe. Let's go ahead and maybe do that. You know, fairly easy there, we can do that. Uh, roundness, I might want to push that out just a little bit, but you know, maybe I'll take the vignette off and not too much into that there. Um, let's see, so that turns that off. And of course you have some other stuff down here, I can pixelate, you can do borders, distort, a uh, lot I think is some sort of 3D thing. Uh, now these would be of course our masses we can do. So we can't go in here and burn and dodge. Again, that's not gonna be available with the free version. Uh, so fairly easy to use interface. One thing I will mention I did not like, it's not immediately intuitive how you would do a black and white image or at least any advanced black and white image. So I didn't figure out how to do it. So what you have to do is actually go in here to saturation, desaturate completely. And then these HSL adjustments, I don't know if you're familiar with the adjustments and you know, like Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Camera, where you can actually adjust the brightness and darkness of the individual green, yellow, blue, whatever colors in a black and white image. So for example, I could do, you know, I'm already in green again, but I can go ahead and change the luminance of those. And it would slowly, whoops, getting out of that there. It should slowly here start to brighten things up just a little bit, but yeah, there you go. So you can kind of see the, the, the you know, the, the yellows there doing something. So, you know, fairly easy to use, um, you're not spectacular. In fact, the adjustments don't seem quite as powerful as what I was used to maybe some other programs. But again, a lot of those are paid programs. So let's go ahead and get out of that. Maybe I'll go ahead and bring my saturation back to where it was. And, you know, there you go. So of course I can go ahead and manipulate some more images down here. Uh, I will mention it does it's supposed to open RAW files. I did have a little bit of trouble opening my Sony RAW files, but I've got a much older camera. So perhaps on newer models and other makes, it wouldn't be too much of an issue, but no problem editing TIFFs, JPEGs, stuff like that. Um, so all fairly easy to use. Now, if I want to export, all I got to do is hit the save photo button. I've got all sorts of, I can do a TIFF, you know, uh, without compression, JPEG, different compression marks do a watermark, uh, really, really nice, easy to use. Um, is it a spectacular program? No, but bear in mind, it is free, and there is that pro version there if you do like it. Uh, I do wish the black and white was a little bit more intuitive. And I do wish they actually spent more time developing the Mac app. I think there was also one on Windows, and I imagine it's a similar situation over there to really take advantage of some of the more powerful features. Uh, you know, we're not just dealing with an iPad or an iPhone or Android tablet. We do have a more powerful computer. It'd be nice if they used all that there. But, you know, that is my little review there. So let me know what you think about Polar. Is it something that you're interested in? Are you using it? Is this convention you might like to use it? Let me know down in the comments. And again, thanks for really watching. Logan Simmons Photography here today, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.